Right, so I'm going to show you a, a neat little trick with uh, JavaScript. So, with this page here, uh, the problem that you have if you're using a postback uh, system is that uh, when the user enters something into the box, then you might be detecting a, an on keystroke event. doesn't quite work all, all the time. But what you get is a postback then when it comes back you might want to update the graphic which means that the focus moves away from the text boxes and it's actually very difficult to to keep it onto the text box and also when the user enters the answer you want it to go into the next text box without them having to press return or moving their mouse and so on okay so when we load it we want it to go there and then we get the right answer we want it to go there and for the last answer it goes back up to the top here we also want the answer to be added. If we use a post back, a post from the form, then the user will feel a delay in the post actually happening to the parameters and coming back again. So what we want to do is set up a JavaScript, JavaScript system to be able to process on the page, on the client side, and then only do the post back when we've finished on this page such as when we click on next challenge okay so i just show you it working so 64 is d e uh, 74 is t and e c t okay did you see that the that uh, ticked that went to one and then the cursor went to the next box so the user doesn't actually have to move the cursor around or anything like that and it obviously detected when I pressed the T there that the answer was correct. So how do we do that? Well we do it with JavaScript and it's quite horrible but I'll show you how it's done. So here's my uh, Razor. I use MVC ASP.NET and with a Razor engine here. So this, the values are passed from from C sharp into the page through view bags or view data. So in this case I fill up uh, view bag one with the answer. I do it in B64 so this converts it back so the user can't look at the, the code and see the answer in plain text. Uh, this is where I pass the the current score that we see at the top here onto the page. We're going to be calculating whether the value is correct or not and then calculating the score from the score value and then the values that are correct and that should give us the value here. So we saw that when we when we actually add the T on you can see that value there is changing. So there's some events actually happening. Okay, so I'll just explain what this function does here. So what I have is I have six text boxes in this case, user, user answer one, user answer two to six. I have graphics T1 to T6. So these are the graphics here and these are the text boxes. This is the, uh, the questions. So what we do is that we detect uh, the keystroke in here and then we check it against the answer it should be and then we update the graphic if it's correct. If it is correct, it'll move on to this text box. So we'll have a look at this little function here. Okay, so we pass in the the, val the text box that we want to check. T2, S2 is the text box that it should go to. If it is correct, T1 is the graphic string. Okay, so that's, our, that's how we identify our, our graphic. So i just show you that from the page, from the Razor page. There. Okay, so there's a JavaScript there. And then up here. Okay, so there's user answer one. And there is our image T1. So when we look at the actual rendering of rendering of this, okay, that's 
it looks like. So there's user answer one. And then over here we have a graphic, an image called T1 there. And then in our code here, we're going to check for user answer one. We're going to refocus on the user answer two, and we'll look to change this this graphic. So if we actually look at the code here, we take the value from the uh, text box. We check if it's the right answer. If it is, we change the source attribute to a tick for the graphic and then we move the focus on to the, uh, the next text box which in this case will be user 2 user answer 2 and then we say that's one value, that's correct otherwise we make it across we return that value back so the value that we get back here is whether the answer the answer that's in this text box is equal to that answer <coughs> so how do we make it event driven? Well, it's this little smart method here that allows us to capture most of the events that happen in the text box. So we're going to check user answer 1 against answer 1 and then we're going to modify this graphic T1. Then we get our answer back and because that's a global variable here then that'll keep a running total as we go through the events. So as they each fire, correct 1, correct 2, up to correct six will be changed each time. Okay, so that's the that's the basics of the uh, the code there. Okay, so initially we we have a, a get. So there's the get uh, for it. So setting up things like the score here that we see and then we call up the page and so there's, there is no postback at all because the postback is going to delay things so we'll sit on this page processing those JavaScript events 66 is F A six D is M okay so did you see that when we pressed in the Y it went automatically to the next here and hopefully for down here C six E L six nine is I okay so it's went uh, up up to them Okay, so, so in this way, uh, the user doesn't really have to move the mouse around or anything like that. Then what should happen is when we get the next challenge, that will do the post and submit the forms and we can save it to our database and it'll bring up a, a new page. Okay, so I'll show you that. There. Oops. Okay, so if we look at the, the button that we have here, we'll see it's a post. Okay, so what will happen is when we press that button, it will do a post and post all the variables with inside our form uh, back to the controller. This one here, I've set up as a get, so you'll actually see that when we click on that one, uh, it brings up a new page, but doesn't do a, a post back here and if you look at this one you'll find that that is a get okay and then we go and load up this window here the blank means that we load into another tab from there okay so that's that's the JavaScript <laughs> you can see how powerful uh, JavaScript and jQuery is, but but actually it's it's quite a tough to get that, and you've really got to debug it often and and get it to to be working correctly because it's often quite quiet. But there's the little there's a the little function there that does most of the the magic. Okay, thanks.